So welcome to the final part of today's lecture. Uh, what I want to do in this part, is, it's mostly an example, but I want to talk about how we can think of solution sets that we're looking at, have been looking at in this course, as spanning sets. And I'm going to use this uh, matrix as an example. I have a three by five example. And what we know from the last part of uh, the previous uh, part of today's lecture is that the null space of this matrix is a subspace. And what we want to do is find a spanning set of this subspace. Okay, so let's just go back and quickly review what the what that means. I have to go way back over here. Here it's saying that if you have a subspace, then a spanning set is a collection of vectors that are inside of H such that you can write every element in H as a linear combination of those vectors. So we're looking kind of for a collection of generators for your subspace. So let's go to my example and I'll show you how to do this. So we know the null is a subspace. How do we actually find kind of a collection of vectors that generate the whole set of the null space? Okay, so here's the solution. All right. I've already kind of did a lot of like the prep work here by giving you a reduced row echelon form matrix. So A is already in row reduced echelon form. Okay, so because of that I can actually read off the free variables very easily. So x2 and x4 are free, which implies that x2 is r and x4 is s. And I can solve for the other uh, um, variables. Right? So x1 minus 2x2 plus 4x4 equals 0. Then we have that x3 minus 9x4 is 0. And then finally we have that x5 is 0. And we can use this information and rewrite things as x1, x3, and x5. So these are our leading variables is equal to 2x2 minus 4x4, 9x4, and this is becomes 2r minus 4s, and this becomes 9s, uh, and this still, this still stays zero. Okay, and so let's rewrite this. We have that so x is in the null space of A if and only if the vector that x, so it looks like x1, x2, x3, x4, and x5, it looks like this. The x1 is 2r minus 4s. The x2 is free, right? So that is r. x3 is 9s. X4 was um, our other free variable, which we had as S, and X5 was zero. And then what we can do is we can break this up and rewrite it as a linear combination. So this is equal to everything with the R. So everything with the R is two, one, zero, 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 plus everything with the S which is minus four, zero, nine, one, zero. Okay, and what we're gonna do is take a step back and notice that, hey, I've taken a vector X and I've written it as a linear combination of vectors that I've seen before. Uh, linear, I've written it as a linear combination of two vectors, right? So look, I have a linear combination, and the R and the S can be any real numbers that I want. So in some sense, I, these things all belong to the span of these two vectors. So what we have, I'll write it in red, is the null space is equal to the span of 2, 1, 0, 0,
and minus four zero nine one zero. So to kind of quickly summarize, we were looking at solutions to Ax equals zero, which we're now describing as the null space. We know that this is a subspace. And in fact, we can find a collection of vectors that describe the whole null space. Uh, and we can describe it as a span of two particular vectors. So I really want to highlight here is that there's nothing new here. Right? The only new thing is just new terminology. Just new terminology. And so the kind of the, there is, a, I should say, something a little new that we're, we've now identified that this, uh, the set of all solutions is a subspace, but we haven't actually done anything new. We're just kind of reinterpreting what we've done before. So before you would have found all solutions and you would have written it in this way. And this just gives you an equivalent way of writing in, writing the definition. And we can use the language of spanning sets and null space. Okay, so let me just kind of wrap up today's lecture just by uh, giving you some of the key ideas from today's uh, four parts. So the key ideas from today are that uh, spanning sets give subspaces. So that's a very useful fact to, to remember. And we've also introduced null spaces and their spanning and their spanning sets. In the next lecture, we'll look at some other subspaces that you can have from a matrix besides the null space. And so again, what we're trying to do is tie some of the notions from the beginning of the class about finding solution systems of solutions. And what we're trying to do is describe properties of those solutions. OK, I'll stop there. And it, that's the end of lecture 20. See you in lecture 21.